then I got a big puff of white smoke out of the pony motor exhaust pipe. We might have found our problem. So, because I didn't drain the coolant, coolant filled up this little area where the clutch housing is. And that's where you saw the oil and the coolant mixing right in here because this area doesn't only have coolant. But when the coolant come, came out of there and just overflowed this whole area, it filled up this passage and then just kind of, you know, drained all the water out of the, the clutch housing. So I drained whole clutch housing got that open now we'll clean it out we'll flush it out before we go putting it back together so we don't end up putting any rust in here but all right so right there's where the pony motor was and this is the clutch that engages the diesel engine to the, the pony motor and so I want to remove that but you can't without taking out the governor throttle assembly and so as much as I don't want to take that out, I'm gonna because I'm in this deep and I might as well. I'm gonna start with getting some of these linkages out of the way and then we'll be able to get a better access to the governor and then the clutch. Here's the governor. Gotta say it like that. Otherwise, it's not right. So we're gonna pull this cover off and take a peek. Wrench was stuck. these levers out of the way. Huh. Okay, so this is the top cap on the governor. And it looks like these caps So it looks like these holes have like a 12 point setup on it that's supposed to retain these two nuts from moving. So this must be either an adjustment or something because it definitely looks like, I don't know if this is up too high or if that's correct or that's where it should be adjusted at. but. I think for right this second, I'm gonna put it back on and leave it alone for now. Until I know for sure.
So that's the inside of the governor. Cool. So that was the air intake for the diesel slash it also ran the exhaust for the pony motor. Seat down there a little better now. So that's the fuel injection pump, the governor. Another wonderful uh, farm fix is, so these are the, the eight bolts that hold the intake manifold onto the diesel and the top ones I'm not sure if they should all be the same length or not but they're the right diameter they fit the thread correctly the bottom ones this one this one and this one are all undersized and so I don't know the length of the bolt I'm gonna have to look it up but I'm guessing that it's this one so if I take these over here so this threads in there beautifully the right threads it's tight no play you add this one and it it'll go in there but it is one size too small so yeah <laughs> How hard would it have been to get the right bolts? I mean, for goodness sake. So, needless to say, I'm replacing the bolts with the right size. All right, this is the fuel injection pump, and I had to pull the cover off to be able to get to this bolt right here. So, we're gonna get a peek in there. So there's the inside of the injector pump right there. Alright, I'm going to drain the oil out of the governor slash injection pump housing. They share oil, so there's a plug here on the bottom. Smells an awful lot, a lot like fuel. That didn't seem too much like oil to me. Wasn't even much in there. All right, gotta disconnect this little lever mechanism from the fuel injection pump. There we go. Whoops. Come on, where to go? I guess we'll find it later.
as you can see it's starting to rain on me here but I'm gonna keep plowing through all right so this is the fuel injection pump and this rod is what attaches into the governor and same with this this gear here but now we got all this extra room to get the clutch out so that's what I'm gonna work on getting out now we're gonna unbolt this pull it out and it'll give us a lot more room to work in here and we'll be able to take a look at those two mechanisms especially the clutch make sure we're ready to rock and roll when we put it back together first we're gonna pull off this lever Go. The linkage on it. our clutch. There's the housing. A lot more room in here. Special edition might be going in right there. More on that later. Check all, all that nasty sludge out of the bottom of that flywheel housing for the clutch. All right, here we have the starting pinion, starting clutch for the pony motor, and I'm gonna open it up a little bit, take a few, look at a few things, but first off, we'll start by cleaning a little bit. Now that we got that a little bit cleaned off, we're going to open this up and just take a look at it. I'm going to show it to you, show you how it works. Essentially, what happens is when you engage the pony motor to the diesel, what you're actually doing is you're pulling a lever that does this. And then what happens is this gear here engages the flywheel on the diesel engine, turning it over. And then when the diesel starts turning fast enough, centrifugal force, centrifugal force will kick this out. So basically, there's two weighted arms here, and they will, when it gets going fast enough, they will disengage and pop the whole thing out like this. And so basically what we're going to do is open it up a little bit, make sure everything is, looks good, looks clean. The gear here has a little bit of wear, but it's still making plenty of contact, so we're going to clean that up a little bit, just kind of get the burrs off it. But for right this minute, let's get into it. So right here is where the, the lever mechanism engages this shift fork. And the shift fork basically moves back and forth and allows you to engage or disengage. 
So this would go here, this goes up to some other linkages that go up into the cab. And there are three bolts that hold this, so we're going to pull those off. By taking that off, we can get access to the shift fork. So basically, the when you pull the lever, it moves this shift mechanism side to side, engaging the diesel to the pony motor's clutch. So we'll set, set that aside. All right, now you can see in here. mechanism This is the lock tab and the nuts that retain this cone on. Now this should slide off. Gotta disengage it first. These are spring loaded. And they are what kick out when the diesel gets high enough RPM. They kick out with centrifugal force, like that, releasing the clutch, disengaging it from the pony motor. See, there's an inner spring and an outer spring, and this is the plunger that rides on that. This is what gives it the spring pressure outwards to be able to kick that and disengage it from the diesel. It's a full down lock washer that looks like I'm going to need to replace. It's pretty, pretty beat up, and it only takes one time of use to get them beat up. They don't, doesn't take much. And then this gear here will slide off. Work, 
work it out of there. So this is the engagement gear that engages with the the diesel. So now finally we have another cabbed washer. I've already bent the tabs back and now I gotta get this lock ring off. So that's the lock washer and the nut that retains the shaft, pinion shaft, into the block or into this case. I've already loosened this nut on the end, so we'll remove it. And now, find him. I'm correct, this will pull out. No, oh, I broke my. Oh man, I like that little scraper. Oh well. I'll just heat the end up, make another one. So there's the innards. Right here are the clutch discs. And on this end are the brake discs. So it looks like this unit, a lot of them I've seen they have uh, brake discs here. This has just this metal cone and then this fits into that sleeve and basically acts as the brake instead of having brake discs. Alright, so now if I pull this pin, it'll let me undo the spider gears. One, two, three, four, five, 
four and a half turns maybe. So these are what kick out and push the brake towards the end, stopping the clutch so that you can engage it. So yeah, there's some surface rust on this. I'll get that all wire wheeled and it'll clean up nicely. All right, now we got this little like spider pin plate comes off and then next up are the clutch discs and these are what I was really after I wanted to get these out that bottom plate Three keys, one, two, three, and then this gear will slide off. Now I'm not going to remove the bearing on this, this shaft here. I'm going to leave it in there. All right, so here we have the clutch all torn apart. And what I really wanted to get down to was the clutch discs. So there's a brass and then a steel, and they alternate all the way through. And they are extremely flat, and I want to change that so that we can try and add some tension, some spring, into the clutch pack itself. And we'll do that here in a minute. So there's basically one, two, three, four, five brass ones, and one, two, three, four steel ones. And the other big reason I tore this apart is when I took the pony motor off the diesel, all the coolant ran down into the oil of this, causing a lot of oily film, watery film in this, and I want to get rid of that. And so the plan is to wipe everything down, clean it all up, get it all, get all the water out of it, so that when we put it back together, I'm not going to have issues with surface rust and stuff like, like this spider has. I'm also impressed with the lack of wear on everything. Um, there is some wear here on... On the leading edge of these teeth and this is the actual gear that engages with the flywheel but if you see you see how much you can see the wear marks where this gear actually has it engages the flywheel from here all the way forward and so this little bit is just from it bumping into the flywheel or somebody holding it and grinding it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little tool and I'm basically gonna clean up the leading edges of this and then put it right back in. I'm not worried about it at all. So I did speak to uh, Toby over at Squash 253 and he told me not to worry about it at all. He says actually great condition compared to some that he's seen. So the other thing that he suggested doing is putting a little bevel in all the brass clutch discs and I will show you how to do that when we get to it. So now let's get to clean. Alright so these clutch discs the brass ones have like a little wear mark where the brass has kind of gotten raised a little bit from just impacting so I'm going to take a file and just kind of flatten that out like I did on this one on all of them. Just take them like this. Flip them over. go. They're flat. 
flat again. Boom. Now I want to put a slight bevel in these the brass clutch discs. So you take a socket that's just about the right size of the outer diameter and one that is about the right size of the inner diameter. And this was gone over by Toby at Squash 253. And you take and you basically kind of center it over the hole. And you bevel it a little bit. But there's a slight bevel where this is now raised. See that? And then what will happen is, when we put them back together, they will spring a little bit and kind of kick out correctly. So I'm going to do that to all of them, and then we'll put it back together. All right, now i got to make a couple gaskets. All right, made one gasket. Let's make another one. All right, so if you look at this gear here, some of the teeth are just a little bit marred right at the at the front there. So the plan is going to be to grind just a little bit of this front of the tooth, just kind of smooth, so that it doesn't have any burrs. And this is a hardened gear, so we got to use a grinding wheel. So got my little Dremel set up. We're going to do it with that. Got it all cleaned up, ground down both of the leading edges and a little bit around the edge to kind of give it the same dimension across the tooth because it was kind of buggered up and basically beat to heck right at the tip just from having gotten smashed into the gear I think so many times or the flywheel itself. but. Plenty of tooth left, plenty of thickness left, so I'm not overly concerned about this being bad. I just wanted to clean that up and make sure that it was uh, going to slide in and out of there nice and easy. Alright, got everything ready to start assembling and basically gonna start putting it back together with some assembly glue, goo.
if we can't find a cotter pin for this castle nut here. This is the old one. So these are just cotter pins. Yeah, some of them are rusty, some of them are old. These are ones I've just collected over the years here and there, kind of made my own kit. And saves me money, saves me time having to go somewhere and get them. I like having things on hand because they really give me the ability to fix stuff without having to leave. Alright, I had to order both of the lock tab washers, and so I wasn't planning to replace this O-ring or this oil seal, but I figured I might as well, they both were able to get it, they're available next day. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this apart one more time, we're going to pull the whole shaft out, replace the oil seal, replace the O-ring, and then we'll get it all put back together. Might be a good idea to take this fork off. Shifting fork. Without that off, it won't come off. Now let's try and get it. There we go. Here's the old one, and here's the new one. All right, got the proper size seal driver. Perfect. All right, we'll remove this old O ring. All right, new O ring.
get this baby put back together. You got two of the lock washer tabs folded over flat into the, the nut and only two of them will actually fold over. The other two are just there and so we just leave them straight, make sure they're not contacting the, the seal and they'll spin just fine. All right, now we got the new lock washer, the plunger, and then the cap. Glass bolts are going in with red Loctite. We don't want them flying out. All right, I just tapped out the hole on the machine for this gasket. So now I'm gonna line this up. We're gonna tap out the outside edge of it.
Boom. New gasket. That bad boy is ready to rock and roll. So here's the way this uh, clutch works. Essentially, there's a lever in the cab on these 955s. It's different than on the D4s and the D2s. You have one single lever, and you engage the diesel from inside the cab, basically where the operator sits, rather than on the side of the motor here. And so this does not have brake discs like um, D4s and D2s. Essentially what you do is when you push in the single knob, what it does is it pushes this disc into a cone and then that, that breaks this so that it can spin until you push that and then it stops it and then that slows it enough and then you quickly pull it the opposite way and what that does is, is that releases the brake and then there's an arm in here that grabs the tip of this here and pulls it, engaging this. Engaging this gear with the flywheel gear on the actual cat, on the diesel. And so then at that point, the pony motor is spinning, turning this gear, which is then turning the flywheel on the diesel. And then the diesel can start turning over, building oil pressure, building uh, water temperature, etc and then when you're ready to engage you give the diesel fuel and then it it fires up and takes off and the way that it disengages from the pony motor is once it is spinning at a certain rpm the centrifugal force releases these knobs here and then that kicks out disengaging the pony motor from the diesel and then you can shut the pony motor down and just run the machine with the diesel and so then while the machine is operating and the pony motor is off or whatever, the flywheel rides right here in this gap. And so that's basically the exact spot because it has to be able to get in there and, uh, and spin freely without contacting anything on the pony motor. But when it goes to engage, yeah, come on now. Ha! So when it goes to engage, it, uh, brings the gear over into that gap where the flywheel is at, thus m mating the two motors together, allowing one, this pony motor, to start the big diesel engine. So, yeah, it's definitely a really cool way of uh, operating the machine and the way it starts. And I don't want to lose this feature, hence we're, we're not. We're keeping the pony motor. So now I'm a lot more confident that it's going to work properly and I know exactly how it works too. Like. When I started taking this thing apart, I'd never taken one apart. I'd never seen the inside of one. So, you know, it was kind of just a journey for us to go through this part of the, the old cat and figure out how it works and figure out how we could improve it. You know, replace a few uh, O-rings and seals and, and, you know, lock washers, etc. Clean it up and then, you know, we're going to put it back to use. So, I hope you've been enjoying the Old Red series. It's definitely got... A lot of parts to it, and obviously, you know, I never meant to go this far into it, but man, I am having a blast. And so, and trust me, I don't give up. We're getting this machine running. It's definitely coming back to life. So let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this, if you, if you like this series, and if so, we'll keep at it. So thank you again, as always, for joining me here at Salvage Workshop. So one of the really cool things about this machine is right there. You see that? There's three nuts and a plate over a hole. Alright, so we're out here with the boys, Toby and Bowden. Toby is the blue Weimariner, who is the, the dark charcoal one here. Bowden is silver. Come on, guys. So we're just going to take a walk in the woods. For those of you that don't know or are new to the channel, 
I have six Weimaraners. And if you know anything about Weimaraners, you know they're crazy just to have one. I love the dogs. They are amazingly smart, amazingly high energy. But they love their owners. So I came down here to check on this little dam they installed. So right here, I take you up over to this side. There was a huge area where the sewer pipe was exposed. And they had to come in and literally dig down and wrap it with concrete and mesh. It looks like they brought some of these concrete blocks in. And it basically just washed out down to the pipe and there were a couple chunks of pipe that were exposed and that's a huge EPA violation because you don't want your uh, your poop in the stream so that looks a little sketchy still but what do I know and then over here they did another dam kind of thing added all that rock, all this rock, and it's, it, this creek will get all the way up to basically this tree line at times. It rushes like crazy when we get a lot of rain. All right, come on, boys. Go. So Bowden, He's four, and Toby is 12. Toby's a little bit slower. He's lost some uh, pep in his step over the years. But he still loves to be outside, loves going on walks. Good boy, buddy. Come here. Good boy. Let's go get Toby. Go. <whistles> Toby! <whistles> so one thing about wimes, I never put them on leashes. Unless I'm going somewhere public or somewhere like the vet. But if you give them room to run, they won't run off on you. They will always turn back. They might run off a couple hundred yards. They always turn back. Check, make sure you're still around. If I was to turn around right now and not say a thing, they'd be right behind me. All right, come on boys. Let's go, Bowden. <whistles> come on. Come on. Good boy. Come on, old man. Come on, buddy boy. Toby. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah, you're just slow. Easy does it, old man. Easy does it. Well, I hope you enjoy the continued work on the old cat and a little time spent here at Salvage Workshop with me and my Weimaraners. You guys have a great one. Bowden, come. Come on, Bowden. Good boy, yes. Good boy. Have a great one. Good boy. <laughs>